So this video is all about dummy loads or 50 ohm loads. Um, and so I have several here. I have uh, the one in the center here is an SMA. That's probably the best dummy load that I have. That one's good to at least 18 gigahertz. Uh, I've swept it on my friend's VNA and uh, it operates very well to 18 gigahertz. It's quite an expensive one. Uh, there's the kind of the run of the mill BNC ones, 50 ohms usually 50 ohm termination. People really don't think of these as dummy loads, just as a termination. But you could probably put one watt into that, maybe half a watt, one watt. Uh, then I have these N-type ones. These are pretty heavy, so they have a pretty good chunk of stuff in there. I think those are good to five watts. Um, and I have two of them, and it's really funny because this one is really spot on 50 ohms, and this one is 40 ohms. I don't know what happened to this one, but it measures 40 ohms, so that, that'll be an interesting one to uh, take a look at. And then I've got three that I built. Uh, I've got, uh, this is a, my oldest one. Uh, I built this quite a while ago. Um, this is made out of a Pentium heat sink with a, uh, a 50 ohm load resistor on it. And uh, this one, again, I took to my friend's VNA and we swept it out and, and I claim it's really good up to three gigahertz. Uh, so DC to three gigahertz, this one is great. And um, then recently I built this one, I've showed that on some videos, uh, 250 watts. Now when I built that one, I was only thinking it needed to work up to 30 megahertz. And I've really never tested it above 30 megahertz. So it'll be interesting to see if that goes up any farther than that. And then uh, my most recent one is this little guy here. It's a little SMA one, and it's a 50 ohm load, and it's got a, th a 30 dB tap on it. Um, but that one's got some problems. So uh, uh, let's measure them all, and then the uh, second half of the video will be me trying to uh, trying to fix the problem with the uh, with the little load. It's got it's got a funny resonance in it. Um, so yeah, so let's get the uh, Nano VNA out and uh, start measuring some of these. Okay, well, let's see. Let's uh, let's do the little one first. I'm going to disconnect the cable here. We'll put the uh, my premium 18 gigahertz uh, dummy load on there. Hopefully, it'll measure very nice. Yeah, it's just it's just an infinitely small spot. So, and then the yellow trace is the return loss. So the return loss is uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 dB of return loss even at a gigahertz. So that's that's just a super super duper one. Okay, so that's that's that one. Um, let's do. Let me put the uh, cable on here so we can we can measure some other things here. Everything else will be measured with the cable on, and the cable just adds some electrical length to it. So that's why it's zipping around the zipping around the Smith chart there. Okay, let's measure the BNC. So the BNC is going to require an adapter. Uh, is that on camera? Yeah. So uh, an adapter. So I'll put a uh, SMA adapter onto it. So uh, we'll measure it in, in this configuration. And people worry about adapters too much. Adapters are fine. And so uh, the BNC is working. Uh, you can see the Smith chart start to spiral out. So let's. I'm going to say 20 dB return loss is. Uh, as much as I'm going to be willing to give up. So the BNC is testing out to 350 megahertz just fine. So BNC 350 megahertz. All right. Uh, let's see. The next one we're going to test are the end connectors. Uh, remember, I had a 40 and a 50. So we'll measure the we'll measure the 50 ohm load one first, and it also needs an adapter. I have a really nice adapter for that one. Very high quality one. And so look, look at this guy. I mean, he's spot on all the way up to a gigahertz. So he's just a tiny little dot. Return loss isn't quite as good as the little SMA one. We're looking at 10, 20, 30 dB of return loss. Um, so yeah, he's, uh, he's super duper. He has a little bit of weird little resonance in him too. Anyway, so that's the 50 ohm one load. Yeah, let me load in the 40 ohm one. 40 ohm ones are really weird. I don't know what happened to it. So here's the 40 ohm one. And you can see that it's it's just spiraling around 40 ohms. It's kind of weird, but you know it still has it still has you know 17 dB of return loss even at 50 ohms. So you know it's not too bad. It's 40 ohms, right? It's not too too bad. But anyway, that's my 40 ohm one. All right. So the next one we're going to test is uh, 
is, is this one here, okay? And I'm quite proud of this one. It's a nice, it's a nice shape and form function. I've used it a lot. It's nice. Uh, good for 150 watts. Like I said, I've swept it up to three gigahertz. So let's see how it sweeps over here. And you can see that it sweeps very well. We're really, really spot on in the center there. And even at the very least, very worst here, we're up, uh, we're up around minus 23 dB um, at 700 megahertz, and then it gets better again. So it's a very, very nice load. So I'm quite proud of that one. All right, so let's try uh, the next one. Now the next one is this big bruiser. Okay, this is my my 250 watt big bruiser, um, and so it requires an adapter. So let's put that on here. Uh, putting a putting an adapter on the what, PLO 259, whatever those things are. 259, 239, 239. Okay, so let me let me hook it up. Make sure the connectors are tight. Okay. Um, so it's a, a connector now. And there we go. Woo! Look at the spirals. Okay, so we start out good and then it goes bad and bad and bad. So uh, this is 10 dB, 20 dB. Uh, so we are up here. We're only at minus 9 dB here. So definitely not usable there. So let's go down to where it's minus 20. I'm going to have my hand in the way, aren't I? So let me go back so you can watch it spiral in. <laughs> okay, so we're going out to a gigahertz. So added a gigahertz here. Like up here, it's like a short. It's bad. <laughs> uh, so. Spiraling in, spiraling in, spiraling in, and right about there is minus 20. And that's at 90 megahertz. So not too bad, 90 megahertz. So much better than I thought it was going to be. And let's see, let's see if I can sneak it out into the two meter band here. 140, 150 megahertz, it's at minus 15. Uh oh, I just turned it off and on. Oh geez, sorry. Instead of grabbing the little toggle switch there. Okay, so let's go out here to, yeah. So 90 dB, I mean uh, 90 megahertz. So quite respectable, not too bad, not too bad at all. Okay, so let's hook up the next one. I'm pretty happy with that. I was only supposed to go to 30 and it went to 90. Okay. Okay, so the next one is going to be this, uh, this little guy here. And we'll hook him up. Right. And you can see that he's got this weird problem. He's got this weird resonance. It, so he's pretty good everywhere. Uh, let's see. Let's go out here. Let's go out here where it gets the very worst out. Right about there. It's still minus 20 dB at um, 770 megahertz. So it's actually very, very good except for this one little section here. So let's... Uh, Let's take a look. Let me see if I can get everything on camera here. I'll put it right here. So it's got this funny little, funny little resonance here. Dung, dung, dung. And so inside of this thing, I don't know if you can see it really good on camera yet. I'll zoom in farther, but um, I thought that we'd have some RF connection between the, uh, the slug. There's a, there's a, there's a metal slug that this, this is the heat sink. Um, but I wasn't really happy with that, so I put in this little wire here. And I think that wire is, is a little inductor. So if I reach in here with my tweezers and I short out the case to the uh, screw, look at that. It suddenly becomes perfect. So there obviously is not any RF connection between the, uh, the, the outside and the uh, and the actual uh, resistor itself. Um, 
and that little tiny piece of wire that I put in there is just acting as an inductor. So, so I'm going to have to put in this nice RF ground and, and then look to see what we get here. We get, we get a, perfect, a perfect load all the way out to a gigahertz. Everything looks great, all right? So a great use for your Nano VNA, right? You can see it's, it's being very, very useful in what you want it to be doing. Uh, you're, you're looking at a circuit and you're probing around and you're trying to add things and move things around. A lot of times you'll be adjusting uh, filters and stuff and you can tweak them in real time and watch what's going on and stuff. Um, or trimming an antenna for length and stuff. You know, you get this real time, real time graph there. Yeah, so let me just, uh, let me go in and see what I can do about putting in an RF strap and uh, maybe a little piece of copper. Uh, would be better than that stupid little wire there. Even though it's soldered down and everything, it's just it's just too small of a gauge and it's acting as an inductor. And, and then the whole thing just resonates right at about, uh, where is it resonating? I could do a marker sweep, but I don't care. So the peak resonance there is right around 80 megahertz. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just shorting out half of that wire and then it goes down by about a half. So yeah, I just need to get rid of that wire and put in an RF, uh, RF connection. So let's do that. Okay, we're zoomed in here. And uh, as you can see, hopefully, uh, let's see, where's my pointy thing? Uh, so there's this uh, resistor down here and it's uh, bolted down with these two uh, connections here. There's a slug down here. And uh, when I short the slug out, um, from the screw to the outside here, then things get much, much better. So the only thing that's really connecting it now is this little wire here. It's soldered onto the connector and down, but that's just too small of a gauge. So what I was doing is I was just going in here and I was putting in a big, I was like that, I was putting in a big giant RF thing. So what I think I'll do is see if I can't get a, a big piece of copper and uh, a big sheet of copper uh, as big as I can fit in here and have it short out to the side and maybe come around with a little tab and solder onto that connector for a good RF ground. So, uh, yeah, this, this is just acting as a little, uh, it's a little resonant circuit. I don't know if being in the cavity makes it worse or not. I'm not sure. Maybe. All right. Uh, I think you can see that in there. Uh, focus on it a bit. And so I put a piece of big piece of copper there. And it goes down to the screw and folds up and goes over to the connector and gets soldered on. It also makes contact with the sidewall and everything. Uh, so, ooh, things got much better. Uh, so, our worst spot now is at minus 24. And over there, it's at minus 20. So, yeah, I think we're done. Uh, if I go in and I... Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my tweezers over here and I'm going to short out the other side, put ground on both sides of this, uh, of this load. And I can't get that, I can't get that resonance to disappear altogether. So I think I'm going to put a, a secondary strap on the other side just to touch the sidewall. Um, just a tiny little bit, bit of copper there. And we'll button it up and, and we'll call it good. Uh, I think uh, I think this will be a nice little load and now I can use it everywhere and don't have to worry. Okay, RF is some weird stuff. So I've put this little piece of copper over here that makes contact of the sidewall. And uh, yeah, that's all it took. <laughs> and so now it's, uh, sorry about the camera angle, but now it's gotten rid of that bump and uh, it's operating out to a gigahertz, just great. And the center of the Smith chart spiraling around and yeah, everything's looking really good. So yeah, we'll go figure. So make sure you have good RF connection everywhere and uh, things will get better.